And finally, this is the last one, last issue. So other information in documents containing the audited financial statements. Now when the client issued the financial statements together with our auditor's uh, report on it, so sometimes it would be included no, in another document or it would contain uh, another reports from let's say management, from the president, from their leadership before issuing it to the public. No, an example would be an annual report. So the annual report would contain the president's report, management discussion and analysis, and uh, the financial statements together with our audit report. So when we say other information, other information refers to the financial and non-financial information other than the financial statements and the audit report which is included either by law, regulation, or custom in a document contained in audited financial statements. So like here in the Philippines, listed companies or listed entities are required to submit uh, annual report to the PSE or the Philippine uh, Philippine uh, Stock uh, Exchange no? and SEC. So therefore, the, uh, that, uh, that annual report will not only contain the financial statements but also other documents, other reports prepared by the management. And those reports, for example, the management discussion and analysis as well as the, uh, the other report there like for example the president report would contain both financial and non-financial information and some of those information can be cross-referred to the financial statement. Now, for example, if the management in their discussion said that the sales increased by 100%, then it should tally no, with, with, the, with the actual increase in sales presented in the financial statement. So otherwise, there will be a material inconsistency if the information presented in the financial statements would differ from the information in other information. Or if that if there is uh, incorrect information on the other information, although not related in the financial statement, it will constitute a material misstatement of fact. So there are two issues here. One is material inconsistency, and another is material misstatement of facts. So let's discuss the first one, material inconsistency. So when we say material inconsistency, the information in the financial statements would be different from information in the other information. Now let's say in the financial statements, it was it was included there that the sales for the year is, uh, let's say, 500 million pesos. But in the president's report or in the management discussion and analysis, it was mentioned that the sales during the year was 1 billion. So there is a discrepancy. In the financial statement, the sale for the year is 500 million, but in the management report, Contain, contained also in the annual report together with the financial statement, it was mentioned that the sales for the year was 1 billion pesos. So that is an example of what? Material inconsistency. So in that case, so we have to determine which information is correct. So we have to validate which information is correct. Now, if it's the financial statement that did amendment, so meaning to say it's the financial statement that is wrong, so meaning the actual sales for the year is really 1 billion pesos, then we'll have to issue a qualified or adverse opinion. Okay, because that means that the financial statements contain material misstatement. And if the financial statements contain material misstatement, our opinion would be qualified or adverse. So especially if the management refused no, to correct the information in the financial statements. Now what if it's the other way around? So let's say the correct sales is 500 million. So it's the management report which is incorrect. So in that case, if other information needs amendment, it is the incorrect one, then our opinion will remain unmodified. So because at the end of the day, the financial statements are fairly presented. It's the other information which is incorrect. However, we have to add an explanatory paragraph. Now we'll have to add an emphasis of matter paragraph highlighting the information in the financial statements of our client that is inconsistent with the information in the management report or contained in the other information. Okay, so again, huh? if the FS is incorrect and the management refused to correct it, so we have to modify our opinion. 
So, it, since it fall under um, material misstatement, so that would be either qualified or adverse opinion. But if it is the other information that is incorrect, so our opinion will remain unmodified but with explanatory paragraph, particularly emphasis of matter paragraph describing the material inconsistency. We should also consider taking other action as appropriate, like for example, not issuing the report at all or withdrawing from the engagement. Now, because we cannot associate ourselves with information that is not correct. Okay, So we'll have to consider this also. Now, in contrast, when we say material misstatement of fact, the information in other information that is not otherwise related to the financial statement is incorrectly stated. So in this case, the financial statements remain to be correct. So, But there is an information in other information, so let's say the management report or president report, which is incorrect or misleading. So although it's not related to the financial statement. So in that case, the opinion that we will issue in the financial statement will still be unmodified. Okay? We will also not add an emphasis of matter paragraph. So because the information that is incorrect in other information is something not related in the financial statement. So our report will remain as is, unmodified. However, with respect to the material misstatement of fact, we have to discuss that with the management. So we ask also the management to discuss it with qualified third parties like legal counsel. And if the management refuses to correct the information in other information, we have to consider further appropriate action. Like for example, notifying those charged with governance, the board of directors of the company in writing, and obtaining legal advice. So like for example, if, if feasible, withdrawing from the engagement. Now because uh, like earlier, so we cannot associate ourselves with the uh, information that is misleading, although it's not related to the financial statement, but it comes in a document that also contains the financial statement where our report is included. Okay, so summary. Again, material inconsistency versus material misstatement of fact. In material inconsistency, the information is uh, both found in the other information and in the financial statement, but they are uh, different. There is a discrepancy. Now, like in my example earlier, the sales in the financial statement is different from the sales in the management report. So in that case, that is considered material inconsistency. So in contrast, when we say material misstatement of fact, the information in other information not related in the financial statement is incorrect or misleading. Like for example, there's an information in manage re management report that is incorrect. However, that information is not found in the financial statement. In that case, that is considered material misstatement of fact. So if there is a material inconsistency, and the management amend the incorrect information, no problem, we issue unmodified opinion. Now, if the financial statement is incorrect and the management refused to amend or correct the financial statement, then that is equivalent to material misstatement. So therefore, we have to issue what? Qualified or adverse opinion. But if it's the other information that is incorrect and the management refused to correct it or amend it, so the FS remains correct. So we will issue unmodified opinion, but this time with emphasis of matter paragraph describing the material inconsistency. So we should also consider taking other action, so like uh, discussing our options with our lawyers or withdrawing from the engagement or not issuing our audit report. So in case of material misstatement of fact, the financial statement remains to be correct, so our opinion is unmodified, but we have to discuss it with management and ask the management to discuss it with appropriate third party like legal counsel. And if the management refuses to collect that information, we have to consider taking further appropriate action like discussing with our lawyers to determine what would be the appropriate course of action in case the management would insist to, to issue information in other information that is not correct. Okay, so that concludes our discussion of audit report. So in this last part, I included a summary no, of uh, all of those uh, issues that we have encountered in this video lecture. So this is a useful uh, recap or review of the concepts that we have discussed thus far. So here are some of the issues or situation that would uh, result 
to issuance of either unmodified or modified appointment. Okay? Now, one of the common reasons we will modify our opinion is because there is a material misstatement. And if the reason is material misstatement, the relevant opinion is qualified or adverse, depending on the pervasiveness. If the matter is material but not pervasive, we issue qualified opinion. But if it's material and pervasive, we issue adverse opinion. If there are disagreement with management, no? So, in that case, that will also fall under material misstatement. So, if there are disagreement with respect to, let's say, disclosure, okay, or accounting policy, so that would result in material misstatement. So, similarly, the report would be either material or, uh, the report would be either qualified if material or adverse if material and pervasive. Okay, now if the client use an inconsistent accounting policy and it's justified, for example, the client adopted a new standard. Okay, so in that case, the opinion is unmodified with explanatory paragraph. Okay, so describing the reason why the client adopted an inconsistent accounting policy. But if it's not justified, then it will consist material misstatement. So therefore, if material, we issue qualified if material and pervasive, we will issue adverse opinion. Okay? For scope limitation, that means we were not able to obtain evidence. Like for example, in first time audit, we did not uh, obtain information from, let's say, opening balances. Or in group audit, we were not able to audit a component which is material or significant in the financial statement of the group financial statement. In that case, if the effect is material, possible effect is material, we issue qualified. But if it is material and pervasive, we disclaim opinion or issue disclaimer of opinion. So if there is no evidence available, so similar to scope limitation, we were not able to obtain evidence. If material, if the possible effect is material, we issue qualified opinion. If material and pervasive, we issue disclaimer of opinion. Okay. Now, if there are uncertainties, no, if there are uncertainties in uh, the company's uh, operations, so in that case, if adequately disclosed, no, we issue a modified opinion with explanatory paragraph, no, emphasis of matter. So, uh, drawing the attention of the user to the specific note where the uncertainty is, uh, is uh, discussed. Okay. So, however, if it constitutes significant or multiple uncertainties, then we have to disclaim our opinion. So, in case of multiple uncertainties. So, what if it's not adequately disclosed? If it's not adequately disclosed, then it will fall under material misstatement. So, therefore, if the effect is material, qualified. If material and pervasive, adverse. Okay, so because... Uh, if not adequately disclosed, it will be equivalent to material misstatement. So, for going concern. Going concern, if appropriate, then no problem, unmodified. Okay? However, what if appropriate, but with material uncertainty? If with material uncertainty, that could cast significant doubt on the entity's ability to continue as a going concern. So, we have to evaluate whether adequately disclosed or not. If adequately disclosed, then unmodified plus MURGC, no material uncertainty related to going concern paragraph. So additional paragraph in our audit report. Okay. So but if uh, going concern is appropriate with material uncertainty but not adequately disclosed, so we we issue qualified opinion if the effect is material, but if the effect is material and pervasive, we issue adverse. So again, ha, in this case, going concern is still appropriate. However, there is a material and uncertainty that is not disclosed. So in that case, either qualified or adverse depending on the pervasiveness of the matter. But what if going concern assumption is not appropriate in the first place and yet the client presented the FS under going concern basis. In that case, one opinion is only appropriate, adverse. 
in case going concern is inappropriate and the client still used going concern assumption. Now, if there are significant or multiple uncertainties, again, it's better to disclaim our opinion. Usually, that is the general rule. If there are multiple uncertainties, then we'll have to disclaim our opinion. So, other issues that we discussed, group audit. So, we issue unmodified opinion. So, it means that a group auditor assumes responsibility over the engagement. No reference. No, no, no reference with respect to the work of the component auditor. Okay? Now, if we were not able to obtain evidence about the component auditor, then we'll have to issue qualified or disclaimer of opinion. So, because that is equivalent to what? Scope limitation, depending on the pervasiveness of the matter. So, next, dun sa subsequent event, we have discussed uh, when the subsequent event was uh, discovered after the audit report date, but before the financial statements are issued. So, if the financial statements are not yet issued, so we carry out procedures to ascertain whether there is uh, uh, a need no, to amend the financial statement or to correct the financial statement. So, if the management amends the financial statement, then we issue unmodified opinion. Okay? Again, uh, no explanatory paragraph because, uh, it, uh, because uh, the financial statements are not yet uh, issued. Okay? So, meaning to say, the users do not have a copy no, or knowledge yet of the information on the original financial statement. So as if uh, the financial statements will be issued having the correct information from the very uh, first place. So what, what will be the implication will be we need to change our audit report date, issue a new audit report, make sure that the new audit report date should not be earlier than the amended financial statements are approved by uh, the management no, or by the client. We also obtain uh, a new uh, representation letter with respect to the new audit report date and extend our subsequent review up to the new audit report date. So however, there's an asterisk here So because there is an option on our part to dual date our report. So when we dual date our report, we will only uh, issue the new audit report date related to the discovered subsequent event and uh, maintain the original audit report date with the rest of the financial statement. So in that case, we can limit our responsibility with respect to that specific subsequent event uh, discovered after the original report date and uh, before the financial statements or the date before the financial statements are issued. Okay. So, but if the management refused to amend the financial statement, however, if the management refused to amend the financial statement, then that would constitute a material misstatement. So, therefore, we have to issue either qualified or adverse opinion, okay? So, depending on the uh, materiality, okay, or the pervasiveness. So, if uh, material but not pervasive, qualified opinion. If uh, material and pervasive, we issue adverse opinion. Okay, but uh, we have discussed an issue if the audit report was already released to the client. So, if the audit report was uh, already released to the client, so we have to take actions to prevent future reliance on the report that we have issued. Now, how about uh, uh, facts that are made known to the auditor after the financial statements are issued? So, in this case, a difference from here is that in this case, the financial statements are issued already. So, the users already got hold no, of the financial statements together with our original audit report. And there's a revision needed. So, if there's a revision re needed, so we carry out procedures. Now, with respect to, to that subsequent event, Okay, and uh, issue a new audit report with emphasis of matter paragraph. So, if the management revises the FS, so we issue a modified conclusion, this time with emphasis of matter paragraph. So, again, uh, the, the difference here is that because the financial statements are issued already in the past, so we have to inform the user of that fact by adding explanatory paragraph. Now, unlike here, wherein the financial statements are not yet issued when the subsequent event was discovered. And then we have to extend our subsequent event review to the new audit report 
but this time we are permitted to limit our proce procedure no? on the specific subsequent event discovered after the date the financial statements are issued. Okay? But if the management refused to revise, so we have to take action to prevent future reliance on the issued audit report or original audit report. But our course of action will depend on our legal rights, obligation, and recommendation of our lawyers. However, we also mentioned that revision might not be necessary if the issuance of the next financial statements are imminent. In that case, that next financial statements should contain disclosure. So about the revision that should have taken place. Then the last part that we have discussed, we have material inconsistency. So we mentioned earlier no, that if the financial statement is correct, other information is incorrect, okay, but uh, the management revised the other information, no problem. Okay? Or the financial statement is correct, other information is incorrect, but management reviews to revise. Uh, to revise lang yan, ah. So to revise the other information, so since the FS is still correct, then we, is, we still issue a modified opinion, but with emphasis of matter paragraph describing the material inconsistency. Okay? But if it's the FS that is incorrect, the other information is correct, and management refused to amend the financial statement, then we issue qualified or adverse opinion. So depending on the pervasiveness. If material, then uh, qualified. If material and pervasive, then we issue adverse opinion. Okay, so therefore really, uh, we just have to determine the reason regardless of the issue, no? regardless of the situation. So it boils down to two major reasons, material misstatement and scope limitation. Pag material misstatement, so our opinion would uh, either fall under qualified or adverse. If scope limitation, inability to obtain evidence, qualified or adverse. Okay, but there are also situations where we need to uh, add explanatory paragraph if there are information that are fundamental to the user's understanding even if the opinion is unmodified. So that concludes our discussion now with respect to audit report.